A very good morning and a warm welcome to the Ladies Club. My name is Valen Kirtley. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Mzanzi's Top Women's Sports Chat Show. We're going to tackle diverse topics as we do each and every single week. And we have a great show in store for you today. We'll be getting up close and very personal with a leading lady in South African sport and also catch up on the latest news in women's sports. A special guest in studio. We are joined by Kosafa Secretary General Yena now you're welcome of course for a social media platform sits around somebody sang a hashtag at at spotted SBC hashtag on the ladies club kapake valen ketli kapake lebo motswedi on twitter hapo ka kufumana ko instagram you also said something else on yeah. instagram where are we yeah we're all over social media just use our hashtag hashtag the ladies club because we are there on instagram yeah. too now our leading conversation today is all about women who are breaking gender stereotypes in sports administration it's no secret that there is a massive gender mm. imbalance when it comes to the world of sports in the boardrooms. The Sooner Sport governing bodies acknowledge the value of women on their boards and commit to achieving more e equity better for sport worldwide. Now, looking at some of uh, the stories making headlines, uh, Valen, I know you're a big fan of cycling. We used to do a lot of cycling progress back in the years, but Ashley Mulman Pasio, she's confirmed her status as the queen of South African road cycling after winning her fifth national road race title at the South African Road Championships in the Tswane Kopitoria. Well, massive congratulations to her because it was an emotional victory for Mulman Pasio as she was still recovering from an allergic reaction that she suffered prior to the time trial. And then you had young Tiffany Keep who won the national under 23 mm. road race title so massive congratulations to the two of them and to all the cyclists that took part in our national championship absolutely let's now get right into it it is time to get the ball rolling with an inspiring quote and this week our words of wisdom come from south african commercial pilot asnath mahapa now boys must accept what girls can become anything they want and girls must believe in themselves that they can become anything that they want. Those are her words. I love, love, love that quote. And it comes from a lady who really walks the talk. Asnath made history when she became the first black female to become a commercial pilot. Then she went on to open the African College of Aviation in 2012 to help train the next generation of budding female flight talent. She's incredible because I remember just uh, last year there was an all-female crew for the very first time to Sao Paulo in Brazil. So from the maintenance, from the stewards in the, on flight, technical stuff, it was just an all-female crew and she was the head of that, the first black South African yeah. pilot. So she's absolutely incredible. We chat to our guest, Uri Emmett. Welcome back, you're watching The Ladies Club. Please join us on social media, whether it's on Instagram or Twitter. Uh, we'd love to hear your comments and get you involved in our conversation. It's no. so easy. Yeah. Just use our hashtag. Hashtag lives. <laughs> the Ladies Club. <laughs> That's where you can get involved in our conversation on all social media platforms. At Valen Kirtley. At Lebo Motswedi. At Sported SABC. Now we have a very special guest in studio, Khumbiyone Muyamutle. She is amongst the very few women in our country to have found a seat at the table where major sports decisions are made. Kasafa Secretary, Secretary General Sue Daytom is a great inspiration to many young women like myself. Yes, she moved from a career in insurance and then joined the world of sports marketing. She was involved in a number of high-profile sports events, building her name as an event manager. And then in 2009, she was appointed as the Chief Operations Officer of Kasafa, working her way to become the organization's Secretary General. And that's just one of a number of seats that she mm. holds and uh, portfolios that she's involved in. Welcome to the Ladies Club. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. From so, yes. I mean, insurance to, to the world <laughs> of sports. I mean, how did that come about? Sometimes, uh, you know, things unfold in your life. Uh, and uh, you know, they, they weren't planned. Um, it just uh, happened to happen to be meeting somebody um, who was involved in sports marketing uh, at that uh, point in time uh, of my life. Um, uh, this friend thought I needed a change of, of scenery. I didn't. I was quite happy <laughs> in, in insurance. But um, you know, he carried on uh, uh, nagging me, 
And uh, so I said, well, you know, uh, what have I got to lose? So a, um, a change is as good as a holiday. So went into, into sports marketing and that was the, the company that um, uh, conceptualized and uh, together with uh, SA Breweries, the Kasafa Castle Cup. And um, so I worked on that side of the fence, um, you know, for the sports marketing company alongside of Kasafa from, um, uh, well, that was in 96, in, yeah, from 94, involved in, in, in other um, football properties, the Simba Four Nations um, and the Nelson Mandela Challenge, which, uh, which the company that I worked for was also uh, involved in. So you leave insurance, a, 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 an insurance broker position, you get into sport in 1994 mm -hmm. and you go right into it having no knowledge, no nothing yeah. for, and you get right into it and up until now you have been involved in Kosafa. That's incredible. Coming from, from a, a, different, uh, a different perspective in uh, eventing, whether you do it in, I guess, in, yeah. in football or anything yeah. else, it's... Um, it's uh, similar, the, yeah. you know, the, the, um, the skills are, are, are the same. Um, and this just happened to be in football and um, my late husband had played football, my son played football. So, you know, it was, if you can't beat them, join them. Okay. Um, and it was literally straight into sure. um, uh, the inaugural Simba Four Nations tournament, which uh, Bafana played in in 94. Remember, they'd only come back into football, uh, yeah, international yeah. football in 92. And uh, um, Simba uh, were um, under the Food Corps uh, banner. And um, so they were our uh, uh, title sponsor for that tournament. It was a very exciting tournament. Four nations only, as, a, as the name suggests. South Africa with another three. And I think in the first year, I think we had Ghana, um, Ghana Cameroon and Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, playing in South Africa, and then we did it for another three, uh, another t two years there, thereafter. Um, so yeah, that's that was it. Sure. Baptism what? by fire. I mean, and, and it really was because you have to understand that you've come from this world of over a decade of being in insurance, a very safe environment, to the turn of democracy, mm -hmm. being involved in football, and just the energy mm -hmm. of being involved in sports is always something to think about. But then to be involved in the sport mm -hmm. at that specific time. Yes, very exciting. It really was very exciting. Um, and leading on from there, uh, and the these uh, friendly uh, but international competitions like the Simba Four Nations, like the Nelson Mandela, um, and uh, grooming the 96 Bafana, um, the class of 96, mm. for the African Cup of Nations, which South Africa hosted um, uh, that year. And uh, I was involved, you know, in, in that um, from a, a protocol perspective, actually. That was, you know, one of the things that I seem to have done for my sins over the, over <laughs> the years as well. Um, so it was a really exciting time. Sure. Sure. All right, so sports marketing then the move to actual the organization of Kusafa. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the link, the marriage that led to one into the other then. Well, as I say, you know, I um, worked alongside for the four uh, on the sports marketing side from 1996. Yeah. Uh, so working alongside Kusafa because at that uh, particular point in time, they didn't organize their own uh, their own competitions. So I worked alongside them and then um, in 2009, yes, uh, you know, they uh, by that time had now um, a different president, um, Suketu Patel, and he had, um, you know, orchestrated and, and uh, uh, fought hard to, to bring back all of Kasafa's uh, competition properties um, into, into their own stable. And um, uh, therefore needed, um, you know, to add to, to their staff, we had the Secretary General, it was um, the uh, very well-known Ashford Mamalodi from, from Botswana, he was the inaugural um, uh, Secretary General, but needed another person. So uh, that other person uh, was me because I had worked, you know, uh, alongside them and knew integrally um, Kasafa and all of its member associations, oh, etc. Not only are you the Secretary General of Kasafa, which looks after football in the Southern African region, but you also are, are on some high profile committees when it comes to continental football and then, of course, international women's football, too. Uh, yeah, uh, with you know, once you 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 in you're in the family of uh, of football, although not working for the national association here, um, I started working uh, with uh, with CAF on their tournaments um, in two thousand and 
2005 was, uh, you know, uh, the, the first actual tournament that I did, although um, I had uh, done some work in, in, in the sports television um, uh, industry, actually, as a, kind of a, a PA stroke whatever um, <laughs> uh, for the Champions League. If there was a Champions League match and it was in a country uh, that didn't have its own uh, national broadcaster that could act as a host broadcaster, they, uh, CAF, um, and through their sports marketing company, uh, Sport5, then farmed it out. And um, so I did a couple of, uh, couple of matches there with a freelance uh, crew. So I got to know my way around, uh, around the uh, television industry, which stood me in good stead when we started doing our Kasafa Castle Cup matches, because in those days, the format was different uh, from what it is now. And we went uh, around um, to many countries weekends um, and took everything lock, stock and barrel in those days. Um, <laughs> freelance crew on, on an aeroplane. Everything um, was on there. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, and, and so we went Advertising about, so boards, everything. Everything. The everything. everything. <laughs> yes. Every T-shirt, every cap, every <laughs> perimeter board. Um, and, and off we would, uh, uh, I can't say jet into Africa, but we, jet, we went yeah. into Africa. You know, we, we kind of progressed from a DC-9 to a DC-4. We were really getting, um, uh, you know, sort of big then. And... Um, yeah, it was uh, really interesting times. So, and then 2005, I uh, started working with, with CAF on their tournaments. Um, that was an under-17 tournament, very interesting one, in the Gambia. Um, and uh, the Gambia uh, that won that tournament, actually. Uh, Ghana came second. And they, uh, that year, I think, uh, qualified for Chile, if I'm not mistaken. It was a very interesting uh, tournament because in the final, the home team and, uh, and Ghana... Um, the the coach was uh, sorry the the referee was from uh, Lesotho, and uh, the play you know the the ball was in play. Um, Ghana a, a player scored well I can't say scored goal he shot at goals the ball crossed the line and at the very same time a person um, who was like a spirit because nobody in that entire stadium which was full um, saw where that person came from. He must have been in the stands, and suddenly, as the ball crossed the net, he was in the net himself, hanging on uh, to the back of the net. So the uh, <laughs> the goal was disqualified, or disallowed, shall I say? What are you disallowed saying? Disallowed by the referee. Yes. Was the, there ghost in this? The Ghana uh, team were absolutely beside themselves, um, uh, <laughs> and so it was. It was a really, really interesting. Um, it was no a lovely way. tournament, the Gambia. I don't know whether you've ever been there, but it's a super, super country. Lovely, lovely people, but a very interesting final. My goodness, the stories from snacks. Africa. Hey, was there a ghost? Was that a ghost? I know we have to go to a break. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, was it or, or wasn't it a ghost? I mean, the things that you see on the African continent, especially when it comes to football, I'm sure Stu has got so many more stories to tell. Thankfully, we have still got a little bit more time left of this conversation, and there's still so much more to delve into, including her role when it comes to women's football and FIFA. All that and so much more. Do stay with the ladies' club. Welcome back on Zobuhila Nana Larun Lama Fuma Hadili in the Ladies Club. I'm going to make a link to the Ladies Club. I'm going to social media platforms. I'm going to make a link to the guest here. I'm going to make a It is a very interesting one because Kiana Kosafa, General Secretary, Kibuaka Su Day Tom. I'm going to make a link to the Poko. I'm talking about, I'm saying ghosts and yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, you've had quite a colorful career on the on the continent. And a lot of our teams, when they go, the likes of Mamelisa uh, Nalspito Musimani, Orlando Pirates, having been there, done that as well, always struggle with um, the around settings of what happens before the game or after the game or during the game, like the stories that, that you were telling us. <laughs> Africa is a very interesting place. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, it, it's it's really been a fantastic ride, I have yeah. to say. Um, that uh, that leap of faith that I took from from the insurance, uh, you know, uh, business into into the world of football, I don't uh, regret it for one one single moment. Because, um, as we were saying uh, earlier, you don't you don't sometimes realize what you are capable of. True. You know, you, you become maybe a little bit stereotyped or you had this plan, so this is what you should do. Um, and then something will come along um, 
and kind of force that change, you know, mm. on you and opens up uh, another whole world, you know, and um, and uh, and shows you what you didn't know that you could do. Sure. Um, and I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I've enjoyed the people that I've come across, you know, in I haven't been to all 54 countries of Africa, but uh, a lot of them um, and super people that, you know, that I've met along the way. And it really is a football family, you know, so that uh, with you know, with working particularly on on tournaments, um, you 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 go, you're away for a month from from your home. You you with a, a group of people, so you build up a camaraderie, um, and it's such that when you go to that country next, you know you feel that you can actually pick up the phone and say hi. You know, I'm mm. uh, I'm in town, and you've got a friend. You know, mm -hmm. um, it's 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 been a good ride. It's been a good ride and it's continuing, but what's not continuing is this conversation just for the moment because we're going to press pause because we're going to tell you about our leading lady. Every single week we bring you a trailblazer and this week's uh, trailblazer is veteran administrator Pinky Lohoko. Pinky joined the South African Football Association back in 1993 and in February this year she actually left the organization. She was the first female to take over the reins at SAFA following her appointment as the organization's acting CEO in 2011 and for a couple of times after mm. that, she was acting CEO. She also worked within the corporate services department as general manager and within the legal and compliance departments at SAFA. She has since been described as the walk-in library of South African football and that's exactly what Dr. Denny Adan um, described her as in her as she was leaving the organization. What kind of footprint do administrators, incredible administrators like Binky, uh, leave behind for women in sport? A legacy. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, to, to be a role model um, for many other people who are working at SAFA now and or are people who are, are going to, to, to come into, into that industry or other industries. As you said, she you know, joined in 1993, South Africa only having come back in 92, um, and um, was you know, really somebody with institutional knowledge. Um, knew everybody, you know, uh, who was anybody in the in the world of football, whether it was in SAFA or in the in the uh, the, the the league um, uh, at the time, etc. Um, a wonderful person who who uh, really gave her all, I think, to to SAFA, and I'm sure she'll be sorely missed. One thing about Pinky, she was a PA and she took her chances. Yes. She, she, she made a way when there was mm. no way. And it seems as if your story is similar in that sense. You, you took a chance and then mm. you grabbed every single opportunity that came your way. Is that what women have to do in order to be successful in sports administration? Yes, I think so. I think you've got to, um, but uh, the same goes, uh, uh, you know, for, for men as well. Uh, I don't think that everything is handed over, to, mm. handed to you on a plate, whether you're a male or a female. Um, but, uh, you know, having, having got into, into, the, the, into the job and, and kind of progressed, I just, uh, there was a passion uh, building, you know, in me. Um, and it has been uh, a, a passion since, really since 1996 mm. uh, in working you know with with Kasafa and it it hasn't abated um, because there's so much more that we have to do there's so much more that we want to do in terms of you know building our competitions um, and and con fulfilling our mission statement as as Kasafa to our member associations which is which is to develop football across the the region um, through competitions uh, played at the highest level, um, not only senior men, but the highest level meaning uh, the professionalism and um, the way you know that the that the tournaments are um, are organised for our member associations. You were handpicked by FIFA alongside with with Fran Fran Hilton Smith for the female leadership development program. Uh, tell me about that experience and what it means to South Africa, Southern Africa, uh, in its entirety. FIFA, as, um, uh, as, as with CAF, uh, look around uh, uh, the, the, the continent, um, mm. FIFA in, in, in you know, the, whole, the whole world, but uh, they've got six confederations and yeah. Africa is, is one of them and this was a, a female uh, um, leadership in, uh, in, in women and the mentoring yeah. uh, more particularly thereof. And um, looking at, uh, at Africa, um, Fran, of course, an absolute uh, doyen and a um, legend in her, in her own lunchtime, as the saying goes, <laughs> um, in, in women's football. Um, and uh, me coming from a completely different perspective, not, you know, not uh, coaching in the technical side, side at all, but um, having 
somehow managed to uh, you know to um, forge ahead and, um, uh, and and make a name for myself. So um, it was humbling. Um, I have to say, uh, it really was humbling to to have been chosen. Um, and um, and again, we had we had some uh, young ladies uh, on that on that program that we were mentoring from uh, various countries uh, in Africa. But I think uh, what all of this goes just to to say and to prove is that um, anything is possible. Um. So you are on the organizing committee for FIFA competitions. So that means that you will oversee the organization of all different tournaments. And you've been a general coordinator, a protocol manager, a match commissioner at different FIFA competitions. Um, but more specifically, last year, match commissioner at the FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup, which took place in France. So what awaits Banyana Banyana in just a couple of months' time when they go to the Women's World Cup in the same country? I think it's going to be an absolutely fabulous tournament. Um, the Under-20... Uh, was uh, was equally so. Um, it was uh, um, contained within one region um, uh, in Brittany, um, a, a across four different uh, different cities. Whereas, of course, the 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 Women's World Cup, um, I think, is eight uh, eight or nine, isn't it? Um, so I think it it really promises to be absolutely fabulous. Um, it, of course, very exciting that uh, that South Africa Banyana Banyana uh, will be there. Um, I'm certainly hoping that that I will be. It's never a given, um, but I'm certainly hoping that uh, that I will be there. Um, of course, not with my South African hat on. Mm -hmm. uh, one has to be unbiased, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, and again, uh, if I if I look at the um, what Kasafa, you know, has what the role that, that they have played in in Banyana's uh, progression. Of course, they've got the most fabulous uh, sponsor. But um, from from our perspective, and here it speaks to what are we the role that the uh, that Kasafa as um, a cap zone has to play a critical role um, in terms of organising regional competitions. Um, and what is the purpose behind that? It's to prepare our teams mm -hmm. for bigger and better. So um, the, the, the 2017 Kasafa Women's Tournament in Bulaway, which was a magnificent tournament in terms of, of the talent and the, and the excitement mm. um, you know, of the crowd, etc., South Africa won it. Um, and then uh, you know, it came uh, to, to play in Port Elizabeth, Nelson and Mandela Bay last year, South Africa winning it again. And um, for that tournament, we had been very strategic in terms of um, inviting uh, outside uh, teams f from our region uh, because we had two open spots. So uh, having had two teams that had really qualified for AFCON, being Zambia and South Africa, we really wanted to push the envelope in terms of bringing in quality teams to, um, you know, to stretch them. Uh, and it worked, you know, Uganda um, on the up and up with, with their women mm. and of course Cameroon who had also qualified for for um, AFCON and didn't have any uh, friendly matches lined up. So they jumped at the opportunity. Are the doors still open for women of now and your message to them? Absolutely, you know, um, and, and as I was saying, uh, things are not just necessarily going to get handed to you on a plate because we are women and yeah. we are seeking gender equity, etc. One still has to make one's uh, way. And if you have a passion about anything, um, you've just got to take it, uh, you know, grab it by both, uh, by both horns uh, and, give it, and give it you all. Absolutely, there are, you know, there are roles to, to be played and, and doors opening, um, whether it's at, uh, at CAF level, whether it's at the National Association or the many regional and, and local football associations just in South Africa as, uh, you know, as a starting block. Absolutely, the world is, the, is your oyster. Mm -hmm. wow. Take your chances, go find those opportunities because they are there waiting for you. Sue Day Tom, Secretary General of Kasafa, thank you so much for coming in and being our game changer on the Ladies Club today. Thank you very much. You've been absolutely amazing. I'm absolutely inspired. And um, I like the fact that it starts at the LFA level. So some people just want to shoot right to the top. Start in your own region. Yes, and then take your community with you as you grow. There we go. That's all we have time for this week. Until we meet again, remember that greatness is always earned and never, ever given. For myself and Lebo and our entire Ladies Club team, goodbye.